So it's not that uncommon while I'm streaming, someone will ask me, hey, Phil, how the heck did you just do that? I'm gonna answer those most commonly asked questions today. Now, some of these obviously are gonna be for more of the newer people, but a lot of this stuff just isn't told or isn't like walked out for you in Diablo 2 Resurrected. Even if you're a veteran player, there's probably one or two of these even you don't know. Now, first off, we're gonna talk about a few different tricks you can do with your little helper walking around right here. These are tricks you can do with your mercenary. Now, obviously, if you wanna swap some gear out, click, drag it over, boom, click right there. Drop the other piece over here in your inventory. It's really that easy, but sometimes maybe you want to swap it super quick or maybe you just want to do it in an easier way. Or sometimes your complete inventory is full. You want to pick something up and just put it right onto your mercenary without having to swap things around in your inventory or in your stash. Let's imagine maybe there's a scenario like this where you're grabbing something directly off the ground, like we'll say this bone visage right here, and you want to put it on your act two mercenary. You got no room in your inventory. You just don't want to click all the buttons to open them up then drag and drop the piece off of them. Well, you can actually just pick this piece up right here off the ground and just click directly on your mercenary. And boom, it just put that piece already on him and pulls the old one off and you can discard it or do whatever you'd like with it. That'll work with the weapon, the armor, the helmet. It works with any of the gear pieces on your mercenary. That's one that I get asked about a lot that people are like, I was today years old when I figured out you could do that. Most people know you can drag and drop potions onto your mercenary, but a lot of people don't realize you can just drag and drop your gear pieces as well and boom, swap them out use. that fast. Another quick gear swap way is, well, a lot of people know if it's in your inventory, hold down control. I'm holding control down right now and you just left click and it'll chuck stuff on the ground. But actually if your inventory and your mercenary are open, if you hold control and do the same left click, boom, it tosses use. it directly onto your mercenary. And let's say you wanna swap gear out super quick. You can open them both, control swap, and you're use. done that fast. That is how fast you can swap gear on your mercenary. Once again, yeah, you just open both yours, hold control, left click, and it's swapped. Just for a little bonus tip, most people know there's a number right on the potions, and if you hit that number, your character will take that potion. But on PC here, if you actually hold down the shift key and then push whatever number of the potion you want to go ahead and use, I'm gonna hit number one. You can see right here, it's completely full, shift one. Thanks. Boom, that potion's gone, and you see my mercenary saying thanks because he just drank the potion. So yes, if you hold down shift, hit the number of the potion that's in your belt slot that you want to use, it goes directly to the mercenary. Another interesting shortcut that they don't really tell you about anywhere, maybe you could see it, you find it around or hear about it, but actually throwing gear on your character super quick, super easy as well, and you can do it from anywhere. There are some actual uses that maybe you haven't thought of here. Obviously from your inventory, holding shift, left click, boom, you see it went on my character. So boom, you could throw stuff on to any spot that fast. But let's say you're over at the stash and let's say, you know what? I don't want this Armageddon cask on my character here anymore. Maybe I want to throw on Jalal's. You can throw it on from your inventory. Maybe this one right here. Boom, swap it that fast. We're going to throw that one on. Swap it that fast. So really, that's just saving you a little bit of time when you're looking through your inventory and through your stash. But it can actually come in crucial when you're in the heat of battle. There could be times you have gear swaps on that when you're out there in the middle of fighting, you actually wanna go ahead and use one and right in the middle of battle, actually throw the other one on super quick without getting hit in between. So what you can do as you're running around fighting, 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 have it in your cube, open that up, shift, click it on, and boom, you're that fast, ready to go. You wanna swap back, boom, ready to go again. Need to swap that out again? Boom, that fast, you're swapping gear pieces, If whether you want to pull off your call to arms and get on something with charges, whether you want to swap helmets out because of just whatever strategy you're doing, you can swap that super quick, straight from your inventory, straight from your cube, straight from your stash. Remember, just holding down the shift key no matter where it's at, and do an old good old left click. Next up is a tip for PC single player, so this is offline single player, but actually kind of gets me in trouble a little bit when I'm playing online, because I got to really keep in mind that I don't have this extremely useful benefit online that you can take advantage of on single player. And that is actually free unlimited respects. Let's say you're gonna be putting points around. Sure, 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 I'm building on my character. Oh no, I put my points in the wrong spot. Or let's say just perhaps you wanna play a completely different build. You wanna just go ahead and swap everything up. I'm gonna show you how to get this set up, but you can actually free unlimitedly respec on offline single player. Now, when you have the character screen open, all you need to do is hold down the alt key on your keyboard and click on any one of these right here and watch the points here. Watch the skill points. Boom, they all went away. It's as if you used a token of absolution online, but you don't have to. You can go ahead and respec here. Oh no, I accidentally dumped all my points in dexterity and I maxed out werebear and I didn't want to do that. Hold up, click again, boom, you completely respec again. You can do it as many times as you want. Now, all you need to do to have this enabled for offline single player, and I'm sorry, console players, but for PC only. 
So just have your Battle.net launcher open and uh, be on the tab for Diablo 2 Resurrected. Open your options, go to game settings. Now, once you're in the game settings, under the game setting tab, obviously, go ahead and check right here where it says additional command line arguments. Go ahead and check right there. All you need to do is type dash enable respec. That easy, that's all you have to type. Now do remember, no spaces and it has to all be spelled correctly. I made the mistake and couldn't figure out what was going on in the first place when I tried this. So make sure it's all spelled just like this. And if it was right here, you can see we got all our points into here, holding shift, boom. And you should be able to unlimitedly free respec. And once again, I do apologize. I did not make the game, but it's only for PC on offline single player. Now, another thing that a lot of people just do not realize and that is you don't really have to kill many monsters in this game in order to actually beat it. Now, of course, you need to kill a bunch of them to get the experience to level up. But I'm talking about actually to beat the difficulties to beat normal nightmare or hell. Now, if I've done my math right, I think it is you technically only have to kill 12 monsters in each difficulty to technically beat the game. And if you don't believe me, I'm going to show and talk about all of that right now. Now, the reason I get asked this question so much is people not understanding that if you just go into a singular spec, like on a sorceress, maybe you're just cold, maybe you're just a fire sorceress. They always ask, how do you get past these monsters? They're all immune to cold here. Or there's so many fire immunes here. How do you get past them all? And really, the easiest thing is you just teleport or you just run. But yeah, these 12 monsters that you technically have to kill, I'm going to go over them one by one here. I'm going to show you a lot of people may think the number is way higher than that, but there's actually a super secret trick that maybe like speedrunners use or super veteran expert players will know about to actually skip a ton of monsters that normally you would have to kill. Maybe a lot of these you would know from getting rushed and stuff. The ones you have to go take out here and there you actually have to be there for to get the quest. But there's even other ones you can skip. So we're down here in Act 4 and technically it is right here. Boom. You just have to take out Andaril. And yeah, I know other monsters do accidentally drop dead after you kill Andaril. But hey, that's not monsters that you killed. You only have to technically kill Andaril in Act 1. To go ahead and get to act two so next up we're in act two and yeah you do have to go get the pieces for the staff teleport around find it run around whatever but actually technically you don't have to kill any monsters down there while you're getting the staff pieces also you have to go down through the jail and then get out to arcane and go ahead and find your way out to the canyon of magis to find talrash's tombs well actually out here even you don't have to kill anything not even the summoner you just have to get past him click the book open the portal and move on and once in the canyon of magis getting down to talrash's tombs to go find Duriel, you might think well you got to clear out the monsters to eventually get up to that point, right? Ah, uh, ah, uh, ah. Uh. Actually, once down in here, into Talarash's tombs, looking for where you put the staff to get down to Duriel, you don't actually have to kill any of the monsters here either. You just got to put the staff in right here and head on down. And once you're down here, go ahead and take your boy Duriel out and move on to Act 3. So two acts down, and we only killed two monsters. So now moving into Act 3, how many monsters do we have to kill? Actually, twice as many as we killed in both of the other acts. So that's two monsters. Similar to the staff, you just got to teleport or run out and technically get the pieces. And then once you're at Trav, there is the one particular individual monster, right? Where is he at? Uh, my mercenary may be killing one on accident, but technically you only have to kill the one that drops the actual mace that you then cube together, smash the orb and move down. While we're here in normal, let's see how good these chance cards are. Oh, Perfect chance cards making the video, gotta love it. In normal difficulty. Well, 40 MF chance cards anyways. But anyways, once you kill that one council member that drops the flail, then you can go ahead and just make your way all the way down to the bottom and take out the one act boss monster. And most people know that's probably Pisto right here. You probably already knew that. But those two monsters down, so we're a total of four monsters down. And hey, we're moving on to act four. And now that we have those four monsters down, in this act for act four, we actually have to take out four monsters to move on past this particular act. A lot of people may know that there's only has to be four monsters killed here because it's actually a trick used in hell difficulty for farming up really high runes and bases and things along those lines. And actually, it's actually called the seal pop trick. Now, the thing is, is once you hit these seals right here, you drop down these right here. And yeah, like I said, my mercenary is accidentally killing some monsters along the way here. But technically, all you got to do is kill this guy right here. Get over here. Where is he? This guy. Right here, Infector of Souls. Once he's down, you can just move on. Then right here, we got the good old Lord DeSace, an absolute menace on hardcore characters, am I right? But you take him out, move on to the next seal boss. We've got Grand Vizier over here, am I right? Grand Vizier, take him out, and go ahead and watch all the monsters to cast Sanctuary all pop. See, so technically, 
I only killed three monsters so far, the fourth being the title of the game, good old Diablo. And with Diablo down, moving on to even the expansion here, Act 5. And most people will know when you come up here onto Ariad Summit and you go ahead and bring out the Ancients, these three you do have to conquer in order to move on and eventually take on Bale. So easy peasy, go ahead and take them out and go ahead and move down to the expansion, the final boss here. Now I know what you're already thinking, Phil, obviously you have to clear the throne room before he'll start dropping down the Bale Waves and then you have to kill all the Bale Waves. Well, actually, technically, you don't. Actually, the throne room just needs to be empty of monsters. You don't have to kill them all. So what you can go ahead and do is lure the monsters out of the throne room or every once in a while. This has happened a couple of times. Let me know if it's ever happened to you. I know it's happened to me. You teleport into the throne room and there's no monsters in here. He just starts laughing and sends down his wave. Now, that is a blessing from the gods of sanctuary. It doesn't happen very often, but sometimes it does just to show you you don't have to kill the monsters in the throne room. It just has to be completely devoid of all monsters. Now, actually, of course, you have to take out the bale waves, but wait, you don't actually. Now, it is incredibly hard. I'm going to try to do it a couple of times here. And if not, I'm going to go ahead and get a clip from an absolute legendary other content creator that can actually do this really good. Like usually it's a speedrunner, but with a certain walking pattern at a certain time, you can actually cause bale to skip every single wave. Remember, it's incredibly difficult. Super difficult. The ways that I've ever seen it done and explained to me, you have to do it in the old graphics. Just that way is the exact pinpoint of when and where you have to walk. Now, there we go. We got to skip. And now you have to go from here. One, two, three, up, down, up. And if you did it right, Bale will laugh again because it's actually starting the next wave. What just happened means I didn't do it right. Let's try it one more time, huh? Because actually I did it so bad. Go one, two, three, up, down, up. You suck, you jackass. So yeah, I tried it five times in a row, couldn't get it right, but this is actually how you do it, what you're watching right here. It's just a particular pattern where you walk up, then you come down and up again. It's it's hard to explain. You gotta see how it's done and they have it explained to you fully. And it is very difficult, but technically, you don't have to actually kill any of these bail waves. You could skip them all. Or, much like with the original part, all you have to do is lure those monsters out of the room as well. If Lister and his pack followed me out here, followed me out here, followed me out here, then I could just teleport around the corner and come in the side. That's the same as if you killed all the monsters. All you have to do is actually clear the throne room. You don't have to kill the monsters. Then of course, after that, boom, we got Bale down here and you do have to take him out to go ahead and beat the game, beat the Act 5 expansion. And there we go. That's 12 monsters you have to kill to beat the game and only 12 technically. Next up, a super common one, maybe the most common one, actually, and that is when people see me do this right here. I do this all of the time. Put my town portals down in my belt. Then anytime you want to cast it, you're running around, you just push that number and it goes ahead and pops up the town portal. The reason I generally do that is because a lot of times, especially when I have absolutely perfect gear offline single player or maybe you're just super rich online. I don't know. You have full inventories of skillers, you've got your geeds, you got your torch and annie, you got seven magic find small charms, and really just a couple of spots. Personally, I don't really want to waste when I have all perfect gear. So I'll forego this, I'll put this here, and I'll go ahead and have skillers all the way across here with my torch right there. There really isn't any room to put a tomb of town portal also, especially when you're playing offline single player, you're doing a lot where you're running out, slapping down monsters, saving and exiting, slapping down monsters, saving and exiting. You're not using hardly any scrolls of town portal you're almost never really coming back to town unless you're saving and exiting so you don't need that many but that's not all down in the belt you could even stick scrolls of identify maybe you don't identify very many things so you can just put that many scrolls down here you can put any type of potion you want you could obviously have healing and mana potions everyone knows that but you can go and stick stamina potions thawing potions or antidote potions down here in your belt and really save room if you do want those a lot of times let's say you get poison in a particular area I will fill up a bunch of these slots with those antidote potions, maybe somewhere in Act 2 where you're getting poisoned all the time. If you got any other tips or tricks that you want people to know, make sure you hit them down in the comments. Make sure you hit the like button. And if you're new to the channel, subscribe up before you go. Peace out, fellas. I'll catch you in the next video.